Is there a supernatural dimension? A world beyond the one we know? Is there life after death? Do angels exist? Can our dreams contain messages from heaven? Can we tap into ancient secrets of the supernatural? Are healing miracles real? Sid Roth has spent over 35 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, welcome. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. My guest is a seer. That means he can see in the invisible world just as most people can see in the natural world. And this is what he told me. Many people's angels, and everyone's got an angel, many of your angels are unemployed. Why? Because you don't know how to cooperate with them. Anyone want to learn? Yeah! <laughs> Now, Kevin Bastani and his wife went on our tour to Israel, and it was actually, I believe, at a communion service that I was conducting. You had some words of knowledge. We had eight of the people on our trip. They, they had um, tumors. Eight of them reported the tumors disappeared. You even got an email from one of the people after the tour, but what happened to her? Amazing, Sid. In the Garden of Gethsemane, the power of God was present to heal. And what we experienced was a precious woman from New Mexico named Olga emailed us. And she had actually had cancer before on one of her chest areas. And it had been surgically removed. And another one developed on her other side. And so the Lord spoke to her. If she would go on the trip, he would heal her. And in the Garden of Gethsemane, sovereignly, the tumor dissolved. And God released a creative miracle in her life. And her testimony was she was totally healed to the glory of God in the name of Yeshua. I don't know. <laughs> Eight tumors disappearing. But Kevin, that kind of makes sense. Tell me about your experience uh, with a, a, an angel that uh, did creative miracles and financial uh, miracles. Yeah, Sid, that was amazing. We had a visitation at our little cabin where this angel of creative miracles and supernatural provision showed up and a purple glory cloud manifested in our cabin. And during this time, I began to see things multiply. Just out of curiosity, when this purple glory, were you alone? Was your wife there? Did anyone see this? Kathy, Besides you? Kathy was with me and she witnessed it. It was late at night and as I was counting money from an offering from one of our events, $100 bills began to multiply in my hands. It was like lightning was flash. And there have been people who have actually videoed this and who have witnessed money multiply in my hands. But after this day, we began to have incredible miracles, creative miracles with healing, but also with provision. I've seen things multiply like gas in my car. People have the money in their bank accounts multiply. People have the money in their wallets multiply. All sorts of amazing miracle signs and wonders since God released this angel of creative miracles to accompany us as we preach the gospel of the kingdom. Now, because you're a seer, a seer is someone that can see what's going on in the invisible world, he has learned that there are ways that we can cooperate with our angels as opposed to having an angel unemployed. What's the best way we can cooperate with our angels? The most important thing we can do, Sid, is to begin to decree audibly God's word over our lives. So according to Psalm 103.20, as we decree God's word, God's angels heed his word. Really what it is, is the fragrance of heaven is attached to the Logos canon of scripture and God's angels, they, they recognize it and then they begin to go forward to bring those things to pass. Now, here's something interesting. God's angels also heed the rhema word where the Holy Spirit or maybe a prophetic word has been given to you that's truly of God. God's angels, as we decree that and speak it audibly, go forward to bring those things to pass. You, you, you mean, life. if I have a prophetic word and I start decreeing it, I'm not making it happen, so to speak, by decreeing it. It's something God wants, but he uses his messengers or his angels to to cause them to come into being. So if I'm not decreeing it, 
I guess my angel's unemployed. That's absolutely true. There are millions of unemployed angels in the kingdom of heaven. And my heart's desire, and I believe the Lord's heart's desire, Sid, is for God's people to get the revelation that we can co-labor with his angels. Uh, demonstrate a decree. Uh, and, uh, and, and actually, I want, this, I want uh, something that you want to happen right now. Decree it. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, I decree that you are releasing your angels of creative miracles and supernatural provision and healing to go forward. And I just sense that even as you're watching this program right now, there are people with arthritis, arthritis in your body. And if you'll begin to move your hands as you watch this broadcast, many of you are going to receive a creative miracle as the arthritis and the pain will go. But actually, the knuckles, the swollen knuckles in your hands will be miraculously healed because God is going to release in your sphere of influence healing angels and angels of supernatural provision and creative miracles. Also, Sid, I like to tell people, I will prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. And what happens is God's angels go forward to begin to work on those word decrees. Uh, you know, something I've been doing uh, by faith, but I'm beginning to really understand this now, is when people walk up to me, and I'm not having such a great day, uh, and they say, how are you doing? In the South, everyone says, how are you? They don't mean a thing about it. They don't care how you are. It's like saying hello. Exactly. But I take advantage of it. And, and I, I say, I am so blessed. And I may not be blessed when I'm saying, but guess what? I've been doing it so long, I actually believe it. And I, and you know what? I am so blessed. You truly are blessed. That's my word confession. When people ask me, hey, Kevin, how are you doing? I tell them I'm truly blessed, highly favored, with great, great grace and divine intervention in my life. Today. I'm a king's kid and a royal priest according to the order of Melchizedek. And I'm walking in the fog, the favor of God. That's why I'm excited about that little book, 31 Word Decrees, because it has 31 decrees like this. People can speak over their lives to release God's angels, to work upon their behalf, to get them from poverty to prosperity, from sickness to health, and from hopelessness to hope. You got to get this offer. Okay. Let me ask you this. I have seen an angel several times. Not like you. I mean, you looked over at our studio and you saw, what, what did you tell me you saw? I saw an angel of glory standing behind you. Oh, yeah, that, no, but the studio, you actually saw angels in the studio watching that we were going to tell people. They're getting so excited. We were going to tell people for the first time how they can cooperate with their angels. That's right, Sid. The whole studio was filled with God's angels because when we begin to talk about God's angels and teach about them from the canon of Scripture, they get very excited because God's angels will have no other testimony when they stand before the judgment seat than what they have done to co-labor with God's people, His children, those who have received Yeshua as Messiah. Okay, well, tell me about someone, which is mostly me outside of a couple of times, that doesn't see angels. Will they operate as effectively for me as they do for you? This will take a lot of pressure off of people, Sid. The answer is absolutely yes. According to the scriptural principle of Psalm 103:20. God's angels heed his word and begin to go forward and do it. So as we decree God's word, we may never see God's angels, but they begin to work on our behalf. So the answer is yes. You can begin to co-labor with God's angels and never see them. But if it's your heart's desire to see See his angels, God will give you exceedingly abundantly above anything you could think, ask, or imagine. And I believe that as people press into this aspect of God's kingdom, more and more people are going to begin to see and discern God's angelic host who are all around us busily working every moment of every day. Okay, when we come back, you're going to find out Kevin literally saw hundreds of warrior, yet you heard me right, warrior angels. I want to know what they look like. I want to know what their purpose are. We'll talk about it when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. Our world is rife with comparisons about what separates us. Day after day, we go about our lives with tunnel vision. But scripture tells us how Messiah broke down the wall between Jew and Gentile, allowing for the creation of one new man, one new humanity. This spiritual completeness is set to usher in the greatest move toward God the world has ever known. Sid Roth has discovered Scripture's key to reaching the Jewish people with God's love. 
one new humanity opens the door for God to move in signs and wonders, and all will see the evidence of the invisible God promised in Scripture. At SidRoth.org, you'll find mentoring tools to empower you to share how one new humanity is critical to bringing multitudes to know God. You'll understand Israel and the Jewish roots of the church and how all the nations of the earth will experience blessings unseen in human history. Log on to SidRoth.org today and learn how one new man is the key to unlocking God's greatest blessings. We now return to It's Supernatural. This is such a fascinating subject, angels. I mean, people don't teach and talk about that enough as far as I'm concerned. But just as there is so such a release of angels on planet Earth right now to cooperate uh, with us to cause things to come into being, assuming we're cooperating with them, that, that's the key. But there's an onslaught of the demonic because we're in the last of the last days. What do you expect? Do the angels help us? in the fighting the demonic. Absolutely, Sid, and that's what God's people need to get the revelation of, that we have the right to co-labor with them. If we could see into the spiritual dimension consistently, we would be amazed at the number of God's angels and demonic that are out there. But as we begin to pray in the name of Yeshua, God will release these mighty warrior angels to fight and to war on our behalf to overcome these demonic things by the blood of Yeshua. And we have the right and the privilege to co-labor with God's angels angels to release them to battle on our behalf in reference to demonic beings. Are, are you afraid at all when you see these demons, when you know these angels are going to fight on your behalf? Absolutely not, because over the years God has given me revelation. Luke 9, 1 says that Yeshua gave us all power and authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal sickness. The key is when you observe them, you must take authority over them, you must bind them, and you must cast them out. Sid, I like to cast them into the pit. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I've heard people uh, tell them, uh, Go under the feet of Jesus. I've heard people go to the, say, go to the pit. What do you prefer? I just tell them to go into the pit and to stay there. I like that. To stay there. Yeah, that, hey, that was key. I hope you were listening to that. Okay, tell me about the hundreds of warrior angels. You had a visitation from the Lord. Yeah, it was in 2002. I was in Tanzania. I was praying in the Spirit, Jude 20. And as I prayed in the Spirit, the heavens opened, Sid, and I saw God's angels first begin to ascend upon on Jesus and the, then descend upon Jesus. You see, Jesus actually stepped out of heaven and began to teach me about the seer anointing and God's angels. And as this was happening, I witnessed hundreds of God's angels. Some would come in from nations of Africa and ascend on Jesus into heaven. Others would ascend from heaven down upon the earth. These were mighty, powerful warrior angels. Describe one. One was, they were all powerful, but they looked like, uh, you know, bodybuilders and they had uh, weapons of warfare, swords and shields and all sorts of bucklers and these sorts of things. And Jesus would point, and I knew by revelation that he was sending them out into different nations in the continent of Africa to further the kingdom of God and to minister in nations and cities for ministries and individuals. God has angels like that. He wants all of his people to understand that they have the privilege to co-labor with. How important is it to pray in the spirit in supernatural languages and tongues. It's extremely important, Sid. You know, over the course of the last 15 years, the Lord has been showing me the importance of praying in the spirit. And what the Lord showed me is, as we pray with understanding at times through the unction of the Holy Spirit, we can pray in other tongues with the understanding that we are releasing God's angels. Many times as we're praying in the spirit, the Holy Spirit is co-laboring with us to release, activate, or loose God's angels to go forward into our sphere of influence on missions of mercy upon the earth. The results can be amazing and incredible. Uh, you know something I want to ask you? You know, just a good worship service. You, you're a seer. You can see what's going on in the invisible <laughs> realm. Uh, tell me, like, uh, what, what did you see in Nashville? You know, that was an amazing in, an event because not only I, but everybody there 
witnessed angelic ministry through their hearing. And what happened, Sid, I was at the Methodist School of the Supernatural. We were teaching about angelic ministry. And at the end of that event, one of the pastors from Tennessee said, I believe we should pray in other tongues. And as we were praying in the Spirit, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit prompted me to tell everyone to stop. And I told them to stop. There were maybe 120 or so people conservatively in the room, pastors, pastors from the Methodist denomination. And when we stopped singing, God's angels continued to sing for about five or ten minutes. Well, and everyone everyone heard it. Well, that was my point. Everyone just heard it. Kevin heard it, that would be interesting. But at this Methodist event, everyone heard it? My understanding is, is that multitudes of people heard it. It was glorious, Sid. Now, I'm told by other friends uh, that when they worship, dance, to, uh, that the angels are literally doing what they're doing. I, have you seen this? Absolutely. Many times God has opened up my eyes to see into the spiritual realm to discern God's angels during worship. You see, God's angels were created by God for His purposes. One of those purposes is to worship the Lamb of God, Yeshua, the Messiah. And as we adore the Lamb of God through our worship, we attract angelic activity. And God's angels at time will join in with us weird spiritual creatures, human beings, as we worship the Lord, as we worship Yeshua. Yeshua, God's angels get excited, they dance, they sing. I've seen angels that play instrument. It's amazing what there's going on in worship services. And if we would exercise our spiritual senses, according to Hebrews 5.14, worship is an opportune time for us to discern and to begin to see God's angels. They love to worship the Lamb of God, Sid. Okay, when we come back, I am going to turn Kevin loose in some amazing revelatory areas. But Here's what you have to understand. Everyone has an angel. You have an angel. I want to find out about these guardian angels when we come back. We'll be right back to It's Supernatural. What misunderstanding there is in reference to angels. The only way we understand angels and truth as to whether they're angels from God or the other is the Word of God. Now, Kevin, tell me about your brand new book. I'm so excited about it. Visitation of Angels. Why'd you write it? Sid, I wrote this book actually because I was in heaven and the Lord spoke to me to begin to teach His people about understanding how to co-labor with God's angels. This book, Visitations of Angels, can really help supercharge and activate whoever reads it to understand that they have angels God has placed in their life and in their sphere of influence. Not only that, there's an amazing prayer of reception at the beginning of the book which can help activate the eyes of your understanding, enlighten your eyes so that you can discern, see, take smell, touch God's angels. And the other thing I'm really excited about, Sid, is that this book is c combined with the new book, 31 Word Decrees, that can revolutionize your life. God's angels are released or activated in your sphere of influence as you decree God's Word, according to Psalm 103.20. So these two books together are a powerful combination because the book 31 Word Decrees has 31 decrees for each day of the month to help you empower God's angels to activate them and to loose them to move forward into your life. God used these same Word Decrees to take me from poverty to prosperity, from sickness to health and from hopelessness to hope. And we get amazing testimonies from all over the world by people who have their lives transformed as they put into practice decreeing these 31 word decrees to activate God's angels to minister on their behalf. This is an amazing series of books. And also, I want to remind you about the exclusive three CD mentoring set, especially for It's Supernatural that's coming with this particular package. Sid, God wants to activate His people to to co-labor okay. with his angels. Kevin, uh, there is coming such a release of angelic help. And if we don't know how to cooperate with the angels, won't they help us anyway? No, not necessarily. You know, there's a great shaking that's coming upon the earth. And I believe one of the things the Lord showed me was that one way we can be kept safe is by learning to co-labor with God's angels because they can give us protection, provision, and all sorts of wonderful blessings from the kingdom of God. But many of our angels sit are unemployed. So this series, these two books and CDs can help you know, help you understand, help you to begin to activate God's angels to work in your life and in your sphere of influence for your family to help bring uh, healing and prosperity and all sorts of wonders, wonderful blessings from the kingdom of God. 
To understand the realm of angels and angelic activity, call now for Kevin Bascani's brand new book, Visitation of Angels, an exclusive three CD teaching set, A Guide to Understanding Angels, and Kevin's powerful book, 31 Word Decrees, that will revolutionize your life for an investment of $40 US dollars. To order, call 1 800 447 2697. That's 1 800 447 2697. Or go to our website at sidroth.org. That's sidroth.org. The book, Visitation of Angels, the three CD set, a guide to understanding angels, and Kevin's powerful book, 31 Word Decrees that will revolutionize your life for an investment of 40 US dollars. Be sure to ask for offer number 9353. Once again, the offer number is 9353. We now return to It's Supernatural. You know, it's so comforting to know that there are warrior angels that are running interference for us. Kevin, has your life ever been spared by an angel? Many times, Sid, in the missions field and on ministry trips. But, you know, there was one particular time early in the day, my wife and I like to sit down and do our devotions. And I pray and I ask the Father in the name of Yeshua to release his angels to go before us and to make our path straight for that day. One day, Kathy and I were on our way to a ministry assignment and a gentleman ran a red light and his car was going to hit us. There was no way. We were in the middle of the intersection. And I just said, Yeshua, I said, Jesus, help. And that car literally passed through the front of our car. And the guy, as he went by, was like, because he knew he was going through our car. And I know without a shadow of a doubt, God has sent his angels to minister for us, according to the Hebrews 114 and Psalm 91 model. We can activate our guardian angels to minister for us. Well, tell me about the angels that you met in London. Oh, that was amazing. We were ministering in London at a church in Clapham Commons, and we had taken a break, and we were walking down the street in London, England, and I kept feeling someone touching my shoulders, and I kept turning around, but no one was there. So I asked the Holy Spirit, Lord, what is this? The Holy Spirit said, Kevin, that's your guardian angel. He's standing behind you, and I could feel his wings spread out over me. Now, you know, Sid, in London, people are kind of to their self. They don't make a lot of eye contact, but this one tall, lanky man walked by, and all of a sudden, his eyes popped open, and he, his mouth dropped open, and he just looked looked at me as he was walking by and then he stopped so I stopped and looked at him and then he walked up to me he said excuse me mate I don't know if you know this but I thought you'd like to know there's an awfully big angel walking behind you and he's got his wings spread out over your shoulders now there's a teachable moment here Sid this man was not a believer in Yeshua he was an ordinary person and if God can open up the eyes of an ordinary person to see his angels what can God do for those who know the Lord as Messiah tell me about a term that we hear all the time, and is it even biblical? guardian angels. Absolutely. Psalm 91.12 is the scripture that most people use in reference to this. In Matthew 18, Jesus was teaching the disciples and they brought a little child to him. Jesus said, see that you do not offend one of these little ones because in heaven, their angels always behold the face of their father. So here's the thing, Sid. If we have guardian angels as little children, do we lose them when we grow up? The answer is no. What happens is our, ma- our mindsets change. We go from having a Hebraic or childlike mindset to having a Greek mindset. We no longer believe it's possible. Everyone has at least one guardian angel. And as we decree God's word over our life, we begin to activate or loose them to go forward to minister for us. In the book of Revelations, John fell at the feet of an angel to worship him. The angel said, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant. The Greek word there is sundulus. It means co-worker of the same divine king. Now I serve a divine king, Sid. How about you? His name is Yeshua. He is the leader of the armies of angels. And so sometimes God gives us the privilege to co-labor with his angelic host. Many times this takes the form of releasing God's guardian angels to go into our sphere of influence, our family, our ministry, our state, our nation, to do missions of mercy, to recreate the Lord Jesus in our sphere of influence. Now, I'm really fascinated with the gifting God has given you. Last night we were having dinner uh, and you, you said to me, the waiter's 
uh, wife, or he said to the waiter, uh, does your wife have migraines? And the, and the guy looked, uh, he, he wasn't, a, <laughs> he was raised Christian, but he wasn't a, he was far away from God, as he admitted uh, later on. And he said, yeah, my wife has horrible migraines. So we prayed. He comes back a few minutes later. I just called my wife, and she is so excited that the migraines are go going. Did he say they were gone or they're going to go? I don't remember. I think she was more excited about the fact he prayed to receive the Lord as Yeshua. And I, I think so. I, and he did, right at the table. That's why God's given us all of these gifts. What happened in Newfoundland? You know, Newfoundland was amazing. I have just began to step into this. Now, understand, uh, Sid, this is a, what I call a supernatural learning curve. And I've been uh, pressing into this for about 15 years. But when God first began to open my eyes to see his angels, I was in Newfoundland and I was taken into heaven. And the Lord Jesus assigned a healing angel to me. And during that time, I came back down and the Lord began to lead me to minister to people. And tumors dissolved. And in one woman's house, uh, the glory of God showed up and gold dust began to rain down as we had tea and scones and by the way scones with gold dust are very tasty but the <laughs> Lord allowed me to prophesy to her as this angel stood behind me and I was able to tell her the secrets and desires of her heart really ministered to her but God has angels like this that he wants all of his people to be aware of because we can co-labor with them would you pray right now for I, you believe every spirit-filled believer can move in this realm I believe so. Pray for, pray for us. I believe that just as Elisha prayed in the book of 2 Kings, he prayed the Lord. He said, Lord, I pray that you would open my servant's eyes. And I just want to decree for those of you watching right now, that scripture says, and God opened the young man's eyes to see the angels and chariots all on the mountain. I pray in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach that the spirit of the Most High God, the Holy Spirit, the Raha Kadesh of God, would begin to fall upon you as you watch this. And that as you begin to lean in and entertain heaven, God God would open up your spiritual eyes that you might see those who are for you are more than those who are against you. And Father, I give you praise and honor and glory for activating the eyes of people's heart and lighting their spiritual discernment so that they might recognize the truth of the kingdom of heaven, that you might give us wisdom and revelation that we can co-labor with God's angels to release them into our sphere of influence. And I just also sense that there are angels of healing and miracles, just as we talked about, that are being released into your sphere of influence right now, whether you're in another state or another nation, just put your hand on the part of your body where you need to be touched, where you need a healing, where you need a miracle. And Father, in Jesus' name, I release and activate your angels of healing and creative miracles to minister for those who are watching this program right now in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And I'm healing, hearing right now. Healing. Someone's neck is being healed right now. Amen. Kevin earlier talked about uh, 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 arthritis in your fingers, your hand. I heard that at the same time. The left part of someone's stomach is being healed right now. Uh, there's oppression in the brain. You're being uh, in, in the forehead area, any brain or any area there. You're being healed right now. Backs are being healed. I'll tell you what, that angel must be here because healing is exploding. You, as a matter of fact, people say, well, if Sid or Kevin would just say my the word of what I'm wrestling with, I have a better idea. The Messiah took every one of your sins, every one of your sicknesses, every one of your pains. You, the, the presence of God is so strong. Whatever your need, cancer, I bind you in Jesus' name and command you to leave. Spirit of death, leave, be healed in Jesus' Hallelujah. name. I'll tell you, I'm excited Hallelujah. about Jesus. How about you? <laughs>
activate the eyes of your understanding, enlighten your eyes so that you can discern, see, taste, smell, touch God's angels. And the other thing I'm really excited about, Sid, is that this book is combined with the new book, 31 Word Decrees That Can Revolutionize Your Life, God's angels are released or activated in your sphere of influence as you decree God's Word, according to Psalm 103.20. So these two books together are a powerful combination because the book 31 Word Decrees has 31 decrees for each day of the month to help you empower God's angels to activate them and to loose them to move forward into your life. God used these same Word Decrees to take me from poverty to prosperity, from sickness to health, and from hopelessness to hope. And we get amazing testimonies from all over the world by people who have their lives transformed as they put into practice decreeing these 31 word decrees to activate God's angels to minister on their behalf. This is an amazing series of books. And also, I want to remind you about the exclusive three CD mentoring set, especially for It's Supernatural that's coming with this particular package. Sid, God wants to activate his people to co-labor okay. with his angels. Kevin, uh, there is coming such a release of angelic help. And if we don't know how to cooperate with the angels, won't they help us anyway? No, not necessarily. You know, there's a great shaking that's coming upon the earth. And I believe one of the things the Lord showed me was that one way we can be kept safe is by learning to co-labor with God's angels because they can give us protection, provision, and all sorts of wonderful blessings from the kingdom of God. But many of our angels sit are unemployed. So this series, these two books and CDs can help you know, help you understand, help you to begin to activate God's angels to work in your life and in your sphere of influence for your family to help bring uh, healing and prosperity and all sorts of wonders, wonderful blessings from the kingdom of God. To understand the realm of angels and angelic activity, call now for Kevin Bascani's brand new book, Visitation of Angels, an exclusive three CD teaching set, a guide to understanding angels, and Kevin's powerful book, 31 Word Decrees that will revolutionize your life for an investment of $40 US dollars. To order, call 1-800-447-2697. That's 1-800-447-2697. Or go to our website at sidroth.org. That's sidroth.org. The book, Visitation of Angels, the three CD set, a guide to understanding angels, and Kevin's powerful book, 31 Word Decrees That Will Revolutionize Your Life for an investment of 40 U.S. dollars. Be sure to ask for offer number 9353. Once again, the offer number is 9353. Next week on It's Supernatural. Why does a rabbi get involved in deliverance, people that have evil spirits. Why does a rabbi say, you will have unprecedented peace when you're totally free? Anyone interested? Your gifts to this ministry will help Sid air It's Supernatural in Israel 28 times a week and distribute his evangelistic book to the Jewish people worldwide.